It's the last week of May. Temperatures are still on the chilly side and projected to stay that way for a while. But even though it's been cold, our overwintered colonies have been building up since early April. Buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. They are quickly filling their boxes with pollen and brood, and I'm starting to see a little early nectar. May can be a tricky month for beekeepers. If the queen runs out of room to lay eggs, the colony will start making swarm preparations. Adding another box helps, but only if the timing is right. Adding extra space too soon makes it harder for the colony to keep the hive warm, which can stall out their spring buildup. So how do we make that decision? First, estimate the current population. This is usually done by looking at the gaps between frames. If each gap is filled, front to back, you have 10 frames of bees. However, looking from the top can be deceiving. Bees are often concentrated in the top part of the box, so it's best to tilt the box backwards and count from the bottom. Sometimes, what looks like 10 frames of bees from the top looks more like six frames of bees from the bottom. Secondly, estimate the growth rate by counting the number of frames with brood. Each full frame of brood produces enough bees to cover three frames. If you find three frames of capped brood in a box, you know that within the next 11 days, enough new bees will emerge to fill the entire box. Thirdly, determine how much space the queen has to continue laying eggs. This is trickier because empty cells are also where the colony stores pollen and nectar, or sugar syrup if you're still feeding them. A frame that appears empty on one day may be completely filled with pollen or nectar the next day. Also, cells become available for eggs again once brood emerges, so a frame of capped brood last week may be available for eggs this week. There's no perfect formula for putting all of this together, but here are a few general principles to follow in late May and early June. 1. If you have bee coverage on most frames, say 7 to 8, and multiple full frames of capped brood, add another box. 2. If you have multiple full frames of capped brood and the queen is running out of room to lay, add a box. Three, if you have more than two full frames of syrup or honey, stop feeding, at least temporarily. At this time of year, you want most empty frames to be dedicated to brood rearing, not food storage. Now let's go through a colony looking for these things. This colony overwintered in three medium boxes, which is the equivalent of two deep boxes. First, I'll scrape off the bridge comb, which I'll save and use later. Then we'll take a look inside. In the top box, the first frame is completely filled with syrup from last September. One side is capped, the other is uncapped. They're rehydrating it and feeding it to the brood. The second frame is nearly identical. I already know they don't need any more syrup. Both sides of the third frame are filled with pollen, ringed with syrup. A perfect food frame. Frame 4 has some capped brood and a lot of eggs on both sides. Frame 5 also has a lot of eggs on both sides, and a small amount of capped drone brood on one side. Frame 6 is mostly eggs and pollen. Frame 7 has a fair amount of capped brood on both sides, and eggs in the middle cells that brood recently emerged from. Frame 8 has capped worker brood on one side. The patch of rounded tops on the other side is capped drone brood. Frame 9 has a mix of capped and open brood on one side, and young open brood on the other side.
Frame 10 has pollen and syrup. I slide it over and insert frame 1, which now is the new frame 10. Many people say you should return frames in the exact position you removed them from. I think this is true for brood frames, but I've never had a problem moving a resource frame from one side of a box to the other. There is a little bit of drone brood between the boxes. I've been cleaning it up as I went, but it's way easier to scrape off from the bottom when the frames are still in the box. After I finish, I set the top box aside and scrape off the drone brood and bridge comb from the top of the second box. It's also full of bees and so is the box below it. I decide to check out the bottom box next. I can see from the top that there is a little brood in the bottom box, but I want to look at a couple of frames to see just how much. The queen is on the first frame I look at. I put her in a safe place, then pull a frame from the other side of the box. It's nearly empty, so she still has room to lay, at least for the next week or so. Now I look at the second box. There are eggs, larvae, or capped brood on five frames in this box. This colony is actually a bit too strong. I removed two frames of capped brood and gave them to a weaker colony. That should prevent them from going into swarm mode. In about two weeks, I'll make one or two splits from them. I put them back together, added a drone frame, and moved on to the next colony. This one overwintered in two mediums. This time, I'm looking at the bottom box first. The bottom box had four partial brood frames, two solid pollen frames, and two frames with stored nectar. Now for the top box. The top box had at least five and a half frames of brood. I gave one frame of brood to a weaker colony and added another box of drawn comb. They'll be fine for two weeks. As always, thanks for dropping in.